Several tribes lived in present-day southern New England before the colonists arrived. They were all Algonquins and spoke the same basic language. Each separate native group was composed of several villages of a few hundred people led by a chief or sachem. John Eliot was not yet entirely fluent in Algonquin when he started his missionary work with the Indians. Praying was what was obvious to everybody, the whites as well, and so they came to be called praying Indians. Living in Roxbury, John Eliot would come to Natick every fortnight and stay overnight. John Eliot felt that preaching in Algonquin was not enough. The Indians should have the Bible written in their own language. In 1663, a Bible was released entirely translated into the Algonquin language. John Eliot formed several praying towns throughout present-day southern New England. First Natick, and then six others, all known as Old Praying Towns. Later on, he formed seven other praying towns more westward, in the Nipmuc country. They were described as new praying towns. King Philip was uh, not a Christian. He was, um, he was a native warrior in what I would consider this country's first patriot. They really didn't want English culture. They didn't want to lose their land, and they revolted. And so uh, the question arises, you see, among those people in the praying towns, what are they going to do? Are they going to side with their Indian friends, friends or enemies outside, or are they going to side with the white men? About 550 praying Indians were deported to Deer Island. The winter was brutal. They weren't winning this war against King Philip the way that they thought they would be able to. And so they went to the island and they asked for the help of the praying Indians. On August 12, 1676, Captain Benjamin Church and his troops besieged Mount Hope where Medicom had retreated. During the attack, King Philip was killed. From 14, only four praying towns survived the war. John Eliot died May 21st, 1690. He was 86 years old. The Indians were sitting ducks. They were vulnerable and they were surrounded by a multitude that had no desire to do anything other than relieve them of all their property. When we look at the harmony and whether or not it worked or whether or not it was as some call a failed experiment. The praying Indian people did not fail the experiment. <laughs>